in all the times to to virtual machine and change something and then compile it and then run it and yes so i thought what if i would make some make something which will allow me to run the the native code directly from uh, smalltalk without need to recompile vm and just do the things which which i need and that's how i came to idea to to implement something like that so native boost essentially is just a little primitive and a little modification of virtual machine which allows uh, enables to you to run the machine code directly from smalltalk so as i as i've written here there there is no nothing interesting at vm side happens all all what happens and all, all what is interesting about native boost is happens at language side and this is where it should be and same as as you guys say that we don't want to to touch vm and we we stay with is this philosophy that we want to have everything in small talk <coughs> so what you have at language side uh, right now is an ffi implementation and assembler for x86 instruction set also there are some instrumentary for generating code and communicating with virtual machine through generating code or with operating system yeah oh you mean you can handle yeah, callback within yes <laughs> so yes why not the i found that low level programming at using high line high level language is extremely fun mm -hmm. and uh, is actually rewarding and you guys you should know about this too <laughs> yes and of course you have a much performance when you do native code you can there is nothing can beat your code un unless some other guy who, who who provides another different version of the native code which runs faster than your native code <laughs> so yes so this is a an overview the just page this is a pro, pro uh, project hosted on uh, code google com there is a, a little of documentation and description how to use it and some uh, basic uh, documentation on, on uh, how it works and a api and stuff like that so virtual machine or plugin it runs on all major platforms but on Mac, I still don't have working implementation, but it's not VM, it's just <laughs> language side. So it is there just to fix it. Everything else is, is just works. So, yes, there is single central primitive. We just makes a call to native code and there is nothing nothing else interesting at, at virtual machine side so it's it's very easy and cheap to modify and uh, i first modified the squeak vm and then cog vm and almost without any pain how how the code run because it's 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 just simple so how it goes uh, just small diagram so when you enter a new method, the interpreter as usual checks if there are primitive which it needs to in invoke. And here I have my, my special primitive which called primitive native call, which just takes the pointer to the native code which is held in, in, met in method and just makes a call. So just 
it's dummy code to, to, to the pointer. And then uh, it runs the native code, whatever I put there. And once it returns, you just return from primitive. So this uh, basically what all primitives do. It, and uh, in, if, you, if you look at this, this actually it means that you can implement a primitive using native code, which uh, simply lies in, in your image. You, you don't have to implement uh, any primitive in C or, or, or recompile VM. This is was a first thing which I wanted to achieve. You just implement primitive in Smalltalk, <coughs> generate the code for it, and you have it. <coughs> so where one imp important aspect is where, where is the native code stored? There is a, <coughs> I don't know if I mentioned before, so each compiled method has a tri trailer. It's actually the, the, the extra bytes passed past the bytecode, which can be anything. And actually not anything, but there a last byte which indicates what kind of, of trailer the compiled method has. So what primitive does, uh, that it checks that uh, a compiled method ha has specific kind of uh, trailer. And then it just computes the offset from method op to the first uh, native code byte and just jumps to that address. So it's simple. And then I implemented, uh, I thought why not, why not uh, just for, for fun implement the FFI callout mechanism because I have this simple native code generator and then I started uh, experimenting. So this is as simple as that. So in same way as you've seen on, on here, you enter the native code, then you, you have a, a generated code which marshalling the arguments. So you convert in the small talk objects to, uh, to corresponding C types like int, float, whatever, pushing them on stack, and then jump to the pointer which represents the external function address. And once it returns, you convert the return value back and leave in the uh, native code and then leave, leave, leave in the <coughs> primitive and you again at language side. So this is a s quite simple and and don't, don't take much time to implement. What difference comparing to F to standard FFI implementation or even Alien. So first about FFI, which I talked about, that you ha you don't have you don't have uh, uh, the level of flexibility is much lower comparing to native boost. So, for instance, imagine that here I can make two external calls at once without leaving to the language side so i can i can pa I, I can uh, uh, invoke first uh, external function and then take its return value and immediately call the next external function without leaving to to to, to language side and this could could uh, improve performance by 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 multiple <laughs> levels of Yeah, so you can actually that is just illustration that you can put anything there, and uh, there is facility which I implemented uh, to communicate with uh, virtual machine. So what it does is just uh, there is a simple IP which allows you to communicate with interpreter proxy IP. So it's basically what you do in in uh, uh, in primitive you always talking with interpreter proxy like convert please convert this integer value to integer object or please uh, convert this integer object to integer value and things like that 
and this is just uh, so it's used for marshalling so it's just a series of calls to interpreter proxy and then pushing this result on stack and do the external call and of course uh, there is no limits how you can use that because it's all up to you yeah so that's actually all the slides and if you have questions or want me to show you something just right now do it right now <laughs> an example of what yeah i can <laughs> so yeah i don't have I don't remember if I have the virtual machine with this guy. So this is a image we supposed to be Ah, uh, yes, this is wrong machine, uh, wrong image. So first I, I will show you the, or should I show you the plugin? Or better, as I said, that there is nothing interesting. So maybe, FFI? Sh uh, FFI? Yeah. Okay. So yes. Uh, what do you mean about security of instruction? You can try to execute any assembler function yes. instruction and, and boom. Yes. Yes. It's all it's all relied on your sanity, you know. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> So, <laughs> here are something extremely simple. So this is a how this how FFI call looks like in using native boost. So you you see the primitive, which is a uh, which is there to to mark this method that it's using the primitive native call and then here you have the small talk uh, code which uh, if you look that here you have the C function prototype or specification which uh, actually tells the tells to this guy that I want to to call the fun uh, the function with this uh, uh, description so is this signature so what what it's uh, what it parses this uh, signature so here you have the function name here you have string and string uh, as types and and uh, here you have the uh, under indirection to to indicate that you 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 using the C library because on different platforms it could be different uh, C library uh, and you bi bind into it differently. So what it does is just yes. So it's subclass re responsibility. So depending on platform. Here we use CRT DLL dot DLL DLL and on Linux it's just a special symbol to indicate that library is a default 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 linking uh, options. So that's the, that's the details. Another example.
So here's the basic thing which where you started from. Starting from is okay. I have some external module, the DLL in operating system or something, and I want to retrieve the pointer to the function in that module. So and it's done simple like that because uh, native booth uses facility by itself so you you can just reuse the functionality which is already there yeah <coughs> so this is quite interesting uh, so as as we saw the slides my my my, my uh, at monday my presentation i was to we were talking about object headers so this this little guy just gives you an integer number which represents an object header. So you can just send the message to any object, which of course should not be a small integer because small, small integer don't have the headers. And it will just return the, uh, the value which, which is held, holds. So you, here you, you can see some black magic with assembler instructions. So it starts from the same uh, from the same class, except that here you have the C deco. It means that uh, I'm going to I'm going to follow the C deco call convention. And here I have anonymous function prototype specification. It means that function uh, returns uh, uint type. And here. A special type OOP means that I push in the self as the argument to that function. And what happens here? So instead of, let me show you the primitive. So here you, you also see C decal and then module. And here the difference that I say C decal and then say emit call. So what happens here that I'm reusing the FFI callout mechanism to marshal the arguments to my custom code. So, uh, so it's like, uh, suppose that you generate the code, you put in uh, everything on stack, marshaling all the arguments you want to convert. And then at the point when you, when you going to emit the external call, you enter in here and you can provide the custom code for making a call. So what? What is self exactly? Self is pointer to receiver, is OOP. It's motor self. But it's not a C function declaration. It should be just. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's, this is a, the it's thing which you can do with, we, you can't do with standard FFI. You are mixing types with. So self here is a. Let me show you. Oh, maybe. Yeah, it's, I, I can show you later. So what is here? So suppose the, suppose you have the class and you have ABC instances. So what you can do What you can do here is when you define in the uh, callout like this, yes. So you can say that this argument is GDD, but second argument is A. And third argument, so you have the, got the idea that you, since you, when you enter the method, you know it's a receiver because you are, uh, in, uh, when uh, the receiver of the message of this message, you know the receiver of this message, and so you can use it. So here you see that this, uh, variable is actually taken not from the arguments as FFI does and, and you cannot escape that you can you should always put the argument there and it just takes uh, loads this argument from from the receiver instance variable and then do, do proper conversion so it doesn't 
important? Yes, of course. It just uh, looks up the corresponding uh, instance variable name and then emit code for loading the instance variable value and then converting the argument. Or you can just say self, then it's just pushing the object pointer which is the receiver. So it's as simple like that. Yeah, you can you can actually follow exactly the same. I mean, it's actually a mix between declaration and the call to the function. Yes. You can copy paste the C uh, from yes C function declaration. So where is it? So here the, I have the. Uh, for Windows 32, there is a special function for uh, uh, in kernel for heap management. And what you see here is a is a little bit uh, modified, but it is the same as uh, as you can find it in doc documentation. So, except that I am also using self because I. I have the heap instance, and in in C fun in the C function, you you a first argument always a, a heap handle. So my heap <laughs> instance, the instance of this uh, class, keeps that handle, and it knows how to how to pass it to this function. Yes. So that's yes. No. No, you don't need anything special. So, so what happens in here? In a, in what happens here that so when when you first time invoking this method, so here you you can see there is no uh, no no tra no special kind of trailer attached there is no native code so what happens when you first invoke in the method uh, the method it's of course the interpreter of, of course enters the primitive and primitive sees that this method do, does not contains the native code and if it of course falls back to interpretation and in interpretation you have your definition on, on of what you should uh, uh, generate when you have this uh, failure. So, so what this code, what this code doing, actually, it generates native code and installs it in this in this na in this exactly this method, and then retries uh, the the message sent. So next time when it installs native code, retries the send you. You again enter in the same code, but but right now primitive don't fails and and it just runs the native code. So a little black magic. What are you planning to change the compiler to? To use some annotations to define. Ah, you mean that to write something like this? Yes? It's possible, but it's not really necessary. Because I found, so first I, when I was implementing this, uh, so w when I had the work in uh, marshalling code, which can uh, convert uh, the objects to s to their C type. Then I thought, oh, because initially I was inter uh, implementing primitives y using handwritten assembler. So I was, I had to, 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 to emit calls by hand to interpreter proxy and uh, do everything manually. 
But now I have this beautiful FFI callout mechanism, which can marshal the arguments and also convert the return value back. So, and what you can see here that I reuse this marshaling mechanism to actually convert input and output automatically. And I, I'm only worrying about the part which, which I need to, 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 pr to produce, actually to, to load the, so see, I, here, so what, what it does? Remember that this is a CDEC call, call, call convention. So it pushing the argument to the stack. And when I enter it here, the stack already uh, ready for use by an external function. But instead, instead of doing call some external function, I just continue in this own code. So I pop in this argument back to the register. And yes, this is. So then I just, I just check in if it's a small integer. And if it's not, If it's not, I just bail in out, yeah, with zero, because a small to a small integers don't have header, so I just answer in zero, and if yes, I just load in the header as it as it uh, loads header of OOP in virtual machine. Just read the pointer, uh, uh, read memory word at, at its at its address, and that's all. <laughs> yes, and. Uh, the convention which I use that in e EIX, a native code should dance for the uh, object pointer. So it should be uh, valid uh, small talk object, either small integer or uh, uh, or uh, yes, or, or object pointer. But here again, I'm reusing the marshalling and. Uh, FFI callout generates code to convert my return value, which is held in uh, EIX re register, back to, to small talk object. So I don't, I don't need to care here about this, all this uh, mess. And that's why it's quite a bit piece of, of uh, assembler instruction. <coughs> 